On that August 2021, the seemingly idyllic life of the Kambu multimillionaire businessman Jonathan Mukundi and his wife Philomena Njeri took a tragic turn, sending shockwaves throughout the country. To outsiders looking in, the couple's relationship goals and had meticulously curated a perfect image on social media, sharing snapshots of their adventurous and aspirational lifestyle, filled with parties, travels, and public displays of affection. However, the veil behind their marriage was lifted on that fateful day when Jonathan Mukundi made the heartbreaking decision to not only unalive himself, but also his wife. So what happened? Welcome to Silent Shadows. As always, if you appreciate our true crime storytelling, support our fortnightly series by liking and subscribing. Together we uncover compelling tales of crimes and mysteries in Kenya and beyond, presenting well-balanced narratives that respect the victims and their loved ones. Jonathan Mukundi Gashunga was born on 14th March 1977 in Nairobi. He was the second child of three children born to the late Michael Gashunga and Teresia Gadoni Gashunga. Growing up, Mukundi was raised by his parents in the Catholic Church and was mostly known to be a quiet and laid-back boy. He went to APTC Utawala for primary school education before proceeding to Roiro High School where he sat for his KCSC. Young Mukundi's life, although going smoothly, would be shaken when his father unalived himself. Despite this devastating loss, Mukundi remained determined to make something out of himself and make his parents proud. Soon after completing high school, Mukundi, who had a bubbling entrepreneurial spirit, started his first business. He got a swanky new matatu, which he named Nameless, after Kenyan-renowned pop singer David Madenge, a.k.a. Nameless, and which operated on Route 100, Kiambu, to Nairobi. Six years later, Mukundi's uncle, Jospat Mukundi, whom he was named after, introduced him to the business of buying damaged cars that had been written off by insurance companies at a throwaway price, salvaging their car parts and selling them at a profit. With dedication and astute business acumen, Mukundi rapidly built his business, establishing a car parts venture in Nolongo, Machakos County. Mukundi's business grew and he was allegedly the biggest supplier of second-hand spare parts in Nairobi. As his business grew, he expanded his portfolio of businesses to real estate and as the years went by, he had accumulated enough wealth, solidifying his position as a respected and affluent business tycoon in Kiambu. And he was even nicknamed Bazu, a moniker befitting him, that means big boss. With the money he had saved, Mukundi built a palatial home in the Muslim area of Kirigiti, Kiambu County. The home, which was completed in 2014, took him seven years to finish. It was huge, beautiful, and heavily secured with high walls, a heavy metal gate, several security cameras, and 12 German shepherd dogs, which both Mukundi and Jerry cherished and adored, and were often adorably featured on their social media channels. It is understandable why Mukundi would take all these security measures, since given his status in society, he would have been a prime candidate for robbery. Regardless of his affluence, Mukundi was described by his friends and workers as a generous, jovial individual with a great sense of humor and who loved his drink. He also easily blended in with anyone and everyone in spite of their socioeconomic background. On the other hand, Mukundi also appreciated the finer things in life, and he was known by those close to him as that one person who would throw lavish parties for them, sparing no expense. Not as a way of beating his chest, but as a gesture of appreciation, since he cherished his relationship with his loved ones. Just like every other human being, he had weaknesses, and Mukundi's Achilles heel was his very hot temper, a character flaw that tragically played a role in the devastating event that took his life and that of his wife Njeri. To illustrate the extent of Mukundi's temper, one of his neighbors told reporters Mukundi once unleashed his dogs on a domestic worker who had stolen cans of beer from his fridge. The neighbor also added Mukundi could not tolerate having unknown individuals near his home. He would often shout at strangers from his balcony, Onaingia hukuni kwa mamako, and then proceed to chase them away without giving them a chance to explain themselves. Living in the U.S., more than 13,000 kilometers away from Mukundi's grand home, were his ex-wife and three children, two boys and one girl. The details of Mukundi's relationship with his ex-wife are not available in the public domain, 
But one thing we know for sure is that he remained very close to his children and made an effort to travel abroad to see them often, as attested to by one of his domestic workers. Following his first marriage ending, Jonathan Mukundi would find love again in 2010 with Philomena Njeri Wanjiru. Njeri, as she was popularly known by her friends and family, was born on that March 1991 in Kianjage East, Kerogoya town, to Margaret Wanjiru. With Njeri's dad not being in the picture and her being the only child, Jerry and her mom shared a very close bond. Her mom raised her as best as she could, and Jerry turned out to be a loving individual with a golden heart, who was bubbly and had a vibrant and social personality. Her academic journey saw her go to Kiambu Primary School, where she excelled in her KCP exams in 2004. She then continued her education at Kirugoya Girls High School, where she sat for her KCSC in 2008, and she managed to join Zita College, where she studied a diploma in ICT. After completing her diploma, Jerry started a small business in Kiambu town. Outside of work, Jerry enjoyed going out with her friends, and just like Mukundi, she loved the finer things in life. As fate would have it, in 2010, when Jerry had gone to a local club with her friends, she met Mukundi. In spite of their 14 years age difference, the two hit it off. Evidently, they had a lot in common. They were both born in March, they were running their own businesses, they loved having a good time, and Jerry's outgoing personality complemented Mukundi's more laid-back personality. Their whirlwind romance took off, and the two settled down as husband and wife in a calm with the arrangement soon after meeting. Jerry also left her small business and went to manage her husband's second-hand spare parts dealership in Nolongo. Beyond dedicating much of their time to their thriving business, Jerry and Mukunde enjoyed life to the fullest. The couple frequently traveled together, hosted legendary parties for their family and friends at their home, and sometimes just kicked back with a drink and just chilled by themselves at their house or visited their families, especially their mothers, whom they were very close to. Sadly, when they hit their sixth year of marriage, the couple began fighting, arguing a lot, and it became a frequent occurrence for them to break up and Jerry to frequently leave their matrimonial home. Those close to the couple alleged that their numerous fights and breakups were over a range of things, including Jerry parting too much, money, infidelity, and not having kids. Those close to them also claimed that between 2020 and 2021, the frequency of their fights increased. Given that this was during the pandemic when people were locked in their houses for days on end, it could be that being cooped up at home together worsened their fights. 2021 specifically would be the year when the ball broke and Mukundi and Jerry would be no more. The year 2021 started on a high with Jerry turning 30 on Wednesday that March 2021. One of the couple's domestic workers claimed, in true Jerry's style, she enjoyed herself to the fullest. I mean, as she should, because she was stepping into the third floor. She allegedly threw a lavish birthday party celebrating her day with family and friends. Unfortunately, for reasons unknown, shortly after her birthday party, Mukundi and Jerry had a nasty fight that led to the couple's separation. This separation, which lasted close to five months, would be the longest the couple had experienced, with efforts by friends and family to reconcile them, proving futile. On Monday, 2nd August 2021, Mukundi orchestrated the sinister plan to lure Jerry to their mansion in Kirigiti, Kiambu. On the evening of that day, Mukundi, who owned a fleet of cars and never used a taxi, suspiciously got into a taxi at his mansion. The taxi was driven by his close friend, Robert Njuguna. It is unclear where they were going, but just a few meters after leaving Mukundi's house, the taxi got into a minor accident in which none of the parties in the car were hurt. This was around 8.45 p.m. Mukundi then called the Kiambu police station, which was 13 minutes away, to report the accident. The car was towed to the police station and Robert accompanied it there. But notably, Mukundi headed back home. Later that evening, Mukundi, who had not sustained any injuries, called Jerry, letting her know that he had gotten into an accident and was hurt. He requested her to come promptly to take him to the hospital. Scared that her estranged husband's life might be at stake, 
she rushed to their home against her mother's advice not to reunite with him. Perhaps it was just motherly instincts or she was able to see what Mukundi was capable of. We will never truly know the entirety of what transpired when Jerry got to their mansion in Kirigiti since it was just the two of them in the house. Did they have an argument or not? One thing we know for sure is that they were in the master bedroom, which was locked from the inside, and Mukundi, who was a licensed firearm holder, turned it on Jerry, taking her young life, before turning it on himself. The following day, Tuesday, 3rd August 2021, the couple's domestic workers who lived in quarters outside the main home noted the couple had not come downstairs for breakfast or lunch. They assumed they might have slept in. It was Mukundi's friend Robert, whom he had been with the previous day, who suspected something was wrong when he called him for hours and did not get a response. According to Robert, Mukundi always picked up his phone. Sensing something was off, Robert went to the Kembu police station and submitted a report at 6.01 p.m. under OB number 83-8-2021. Together with the police officers, they headed to Mukundi's home where they found the master bedroom door locked from the inside. They broke the door and found both Mukundi and Jerry deceased, and it was evident Mukundi had carried out the senseless act. At the scene, the police retrieved a mini Glock gun with serial number BEZA-475. Following the gruesome discovery, the neighbors and the workers explained to the police and the media they did not hear any sounds suggesting that Mukundi might have muffled the gunshots with something. The news of the couple's death sent shockwaves across their community and the country at large, raising the question of how a seemingly happy couple living so comfortably would reach such a point. A video from the couple's home following the gruesome discovery can be seen here. The news of the couple's death opened a can of worms as reporters in the general public tried to postulate what issues caused such a rift between Mukundi and Jerry that Mukundi thought death was the best solution. Some of the speculated reasons for their fights, as told by friends and domestic workers, include excessive partying, money, lack of kids, and infidelity. Specifically, those in the couple's inner circle noted to reporters that Mukundi was displeased with Jerry's partying and long nights out, which he deemed excessive. Additionally, some of the couple's friends alleged that Jerry would pinch money from Mukundi's second-hand spare parts business, which she managed. It was alleged that Jerry was using the money to build her mother a home and erect a commercial building. Allegedly, this angered Mukundi and foiled their fights to the extent that he threatened to dissolve their marriage and sell their marital home. One of the couple's friends even alleged that shortly before the tragic incident, Mukundi had brought valuers to assess their house and was serious about selling it. Those close to the couple further claimed the two often fought about suspected infidelity, with Mukundi accusing Jerry of being unfaithful. There was even speculation that, she had opened a spare parts shop for her boyfriend. Furthermore, it is alleged workers at Mukundi's car wash in Dindigwa found used intimacy protection in Jerry's car. One of Mukundi's friends asserted that Mukundi had confided in his friends that he had found out Jerry was seeing another man, which made him depressed as he could not live with the shame. Given Mukundi's hot temper, his friends believed that Jerry's alleged affair was the reason for his drastic actions. Lastly, workers in their home alleged Mukundi and Jerry fought over having children. The couple, which had been together for 10 years, did not have any kids. According to Jerry's friends, she deeply wanted children, and after her 30th birthday and losing a very close friend who left behind a child, her desire to have a child of her own grew. However, it is rumored that Mukundi either did not want to have more children, since he already had three from his previous marriage, or he was struggling to sire them. The rumor mill continued to churn when blogs speculated that Jerry had shown up at the house, pregnant by another man, and Mukundi snapped, leading to the tragedy. This rumor was dispelled when government pathologist Dr. Johansen Oduo conducted an autopsy on both Jerry and Mukundi on Friday 6th August 2021. 
The autopsy report showed that Njeri was not pregnant. Nonetheless, the report did show that Njeri died from four firearm wounds, two to the head and two to the abdomen. This was definitely overkill, which paints a picture of how angry Mukundi was. For Mukundi, the pathologist established that he succumbed to a single firearm injury to the head. We would like to underscore that, at the end of the day, all the theories as to why Mukundi did what he did are speculations. Therefore, take them with a grain of salt and do not be quick to cast judgment on Jerry. Roughly a week after departing from this life to the next, Philomena Jerry Wanjiru was laid to rest at her mother's home on Tuesday, 10th August 2021, as seen here. In a way that aimed to reclaim Jerry's identity by dissociating her from Mukundi, she was buried separately from him and understandably his family did not attend her burial. Furthermore, her surname as immortalized in the burial artifacts, such as the obituary, eulogy and the cross, was her mother's name and not Mukundi's. Jerry's friends eulogized her as beautiful, loving, outgoing and dependable with her motto that she evangelized through the highs and lows of life being, Sini life. Although she did not speak at the funeral, her mother penned her beautiful and heartfelt tribute that was read by Njeri's aunt, as seen here. A daughter is a mother's best friend. Jerry, my one only child, it hurts me that you are gone, but I'm thankful to, for the best that years of my life that you gave me. Through it all, you have always been there. It's always been me and you against it all. You, we are my source. You, you are my source of joy, my pillar of strength when I thought I couldn't make it. Whenever I looked at your smile and laugh, I yearned to fight for another day. I'm jealous of heaven, for it has gained an angel of my previous, precious princess. I cried when you passed. I have cried every day since then. Although I loved you so dearly, it was beyond me to make you stay longer. Yours was a golden heart that stopped beating. Every hard-working hand that were put to rest in your passing, God broke my heart to prove that he takes the best for indeed you are. The voice, the void you have left in my heart will never be filled by anyone. I will hold dear the memories we created, for they will be the ones to keep me going. Fear thee well, my dearest daughter, that mom. Amen. That is the tribute from the... Two days later, Jonathan Mukundi Gashunga was buried on Thursday, 12th August 2021, at his parents' home, as also seen here. During the burial, Mukundi was celebrated as a generous, down-to-earth and gentle soul. The burial speakers also called for the need to address mental health challenges among men, as it was evident to them Mukundi was struggling with his mental health, which pushed him to pull the trigger. One of the overarching message in the two barriers was a call to bloggers and media houses to do their due diligence and approach the news they were putting out about the couple with sensitivity. This stemmed from the numerous rumors circulating in the media, some of which were outright lies and offensive. The case between Jonathan Mukundi and Philomena Njeri is complex and layered, and I invite you to extend grace and empathy to them and their families. Do not be quick to ask, why did she not leave? She did leave, but Mukundi lured her back into his life, and then he did the unthinkable. If he attempted to question 
why she left but kept going back, I urge you to research the psychological barriers that prevent victims from leaving their abusers. Research shows that it can take victims at least seven attempts to break free from their abusers. Of course, this is not a one-size-fits-all situation, but it highlights how difficult it is for victims to escape from their abusers' grasp. This case is also a stark reminder of the challenges our society is grappling with, such as mental health challenges, domestic violence, toxic relationships, and the unspoken downside of transactional relationships. Expanding our scope to other cases we have covered, like those of Lucy Jambi and Catherine Yokabi, we continue to see a thin line between love and hate. You can never fully predict the lens to which someone you share your life with might go to prove that you belong to them and them alone. Regardless of your socioeconomic status, anyone can be a victim of domestic violence. So again, let's not victim blame. This is also another case where an abusive ex lured his former partner and did them the incubo. So please, we continue to urge you to exercise caution when meeting with an ex. Our deepest condolences go out to the families and friends of Jonathan Mukundi Gashunga and Philomena Njeri Wanjiru. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Thank you for joining us today and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified when the next video is up. Until then, please take care, stay safe and always trust your gut.